The Ancient Magus's Bride, Episode 17. Look before you leap. What is going on, party people? It is I, Fumincho, back at it once again with another review for The Ancient Magus's Bride. Today we're talking about Episode 17, and I really enjoyed this episode. It had a really slow build-up, but once when things were getting started, once when things... Uh, once, once when things were happening, I was very much enjoying it. Uh, I liked the, uh, I like Ash and I. I like him as a character. I feel like that there's more to him um, that, that's possibly in the manga, uh, or, or you know hasn't even been written yet and, and is going to be explored later. Uh, I feel like that that is he's going to be important somehow to the plot later on, or he's going to come in and disrupt things once again. Uh, and I, I, I like him. I like his voice. The voice actor uh, they chose for him was 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 a good choice. And, and I like just how he's kind of mischievous, like he's just this mysterious, mischievous guy, and, and that, that's really cool. Again, I know there's more mystery there uh, with him. And I liked, uh, I actually really like Stella, this weird little side character. Uh, her just being introduced uh, last episode, she was just running around in this, um, in the train station, whatever, Paddington station. Um, and she was chasing her brother and everything. And I, I didn't even think of it then, but her as a character in this episode is actually pretty well done, how she's... She puts her trust into Chisei. When uh, Chisei goes in for that, that weird creature, she wants to get information of the weird creature, so she lets the creature drink her blood. And she doesn't even see the creature, so she just sees her bleeding. That was really cool. Her reaction to that was really cool. And she she saw the sacrifice that Chisei was making for her and for her brother. That I really like. One thing I don't like about this episode... <coughs> excuse me. One thing I don't like is how Elias seems to be taking like a step back... And not in, like, a way, like, not him, like, oh, I'll let Chisei handle this. Like, it's it's like his character just isn't written in some of these scenes. Uh, when Ash and I, when they first approach Ash and I in that prairie or what, the field of, of snow or whatever, at least isn't doing anything. He's just standing there. He's not reacting. He's not talking. He's just not doing anything. And I don't know if that's just him as a character. Maybe he's just a quiet guy. Maybe he's just not in it like he, he doesn't feel very emotionally invested in what's going on so he just doesn't really care and that i totally get and i could totally dig that uh otherwise it just seems like his character just isn't even written in those scenes this is something that has happened before in previous episodes so it makes me believe that he is that type of character that just doesn't really care about these kinds of things he's just like whatever like this does not matter to me at all it does not concern me at all i'm just here along the journey whatever like i, I do kind of like that and it does kind of play into his actual character. So maybe it's not a complaint. Maybe it's just something that I'm questioning as of right now. If you guys could uh, comment down below and, and, and discuss that with me. Maybe that's something that, that, that's in the manga that's, that's prevalent. Uh, or maybe it isn't. I don't know. Uh, something else. That it, I love the OST in this episode. And not necessarily just the OST. But also the audio cues. Uh, and when I say audio cues, I mean like little sounds or little instruments like strings going back and forth whenever something would happen. Uh, one of my favorite parts was when Ash and I mentioned like, oh, you said this to your brother. And then she flashes back and she says that I don't need you anymore. And it like the, the strings just go in and it's, it's awesome. It really is. It, it's really, really cool when you have those little moments where you're like, wow, oh, she did say that. So now we get why she's feeling bad about this. Now we understand that her last words to her brother were not good. I mean, we knew that already before they even went out to go find him, but we know that now they're really bad, and that's why it's eating her up inside. Also, when she was forgetting her brother's name, and Chisei was like, oh, his name is... And it, like, it like censored the name. Like, it blocked it out. This Even the subtitles were, like, just a bunch of asterisks. That was really, really cool, and it made, like, a really cool distorted kind of sound. Again, just great audio design, in my opinion. And that's something that I don't... Um, find very often in, in a lot of series. Like, I never applaud a series because of its audio and, and how it's used. And this episode specifically uh, really kind of jumped it up quite a bit. I mean, I think that the audio is always good in, in um, The Ancient Magus' Bride, but this one in, in particular I really enjoyed. Um, a good episode. A good episode. I, I, I like this, this sort of story. It feels like just kind of like, a, like she was going off to go thank Simon for the presents. By the way, the presents, like, why isn't she opening them? Like, I just see, like, he, or maybe it's, like, a safety thing. I don't really know, but, like, Ellie's just, like, opened all of her presents. Like, yep, that's from Simon. Uh, that's from, uh, whatever, that's from Angelica. And this is from, um, what's the other guy? I can't even remember his name. S Silky, the little seal thing with the fish. 
I thought that was kind of funny too. <laughs> but like he just opened all of them, and I thought I was like, well, it's Christmas. Come on, let her let her open her gifts. You can do that. Well, anyway, she was going off to think um, Simon, and they just kind of went off like they saw this girl. She didn't remember her brother, or she was looking for her brother, and, and she say, um, like remembered, oh, I saw her at the station. Something's going on here, and he was like. Just go. Yeah, go ahead. Let's see what's going on. <laughs> I, I like that. It's like, let's just go on a side quest. It's all good. Um, anyway, very much enjoyed this week's episode. If I had to give it a rating, I'd probably give it like an 8. Uh, 7 out of 10. I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. Still not like, I need that drama. I need, I, I'm craving that drama. That those those stakes. Like, I just feel like there just isn't like, I'm not feeling like, like the sense of dread, you know? Like, even when... Uh, they were captured. By the way, it was a really funny scene where they were underwater in that little prison and uh, Ethan was like just grabbing at his skull or whatever. That was really funny. I thought that was a playful scene. Well done. Um, but I'm just not feeling like, I don't feel like anything bad's going to happen. I feel like, yeah, they're going to find them and get them out. Like, I don't feel like the odds are stacked against them, even though I should feel that way. So that's one, re that's my, the biggest complaint out, out of everything is that I don't feel the drama. I don't feel the stakes, the weight of this scene and that's something that I'm looking forward to seeing uh, later on in the series um, so yeah and, and this makes more sense on why they showed that big dragon scene in London or whatever where you see Chise just crying and the winds blowing by it looks incredibly epic and, and scary honestly I think this is why they showed that because that's a while from now we have to wait for that and the rest of the, these episodes are gonna be rather slow and, and, and they're gonna be um, not necessarily that drama filled so I, I I understand now that they're trying to, it's like a carrot on the stick thing. It's exactly what I feared. And, and it, it, it doesn't detract from the quality of these episodes, but it detracts from the quality of the entire series uh, when it comes to its pacing uh, and how it's just working out. And again, I know like it, 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 these episodes aren't bad, but when I look back on the series, like, oh yeah, like episode one through 12 was pretty good. Uh, but then it just really slowed down and just kind of dived. Uh, not this, the episodes weren't bad, but it was just really, really slow and nothing was happening. The plot wasn't progressing. And I don't know. I, I, it, it's not... It's tough to say. Like, I, I, I'm enjoying the episodes, but I'm not enjoying... I, I want more. I want more out of the series. I think that's the best way I can put it. Anyway, I, th I think I'm done rambling on here. I think I've talked uh, a little too much already. Comment down below and give me your thoughts on this week's episode of The Ancient Magus... Or Mahotsukai no Yome. Sorry, I need to start saying that. Mahotsukai no Yome. Um, what did you think of Ash and I here? What do you think of Ethan and her and her sister? What, what was the, that, that was cool. Give me your thoughts on that. Uh, and also Chise turning into a bear, a freaking bear. That was really, really cool. Something I forgot to mention, the animation that was pretty cool. And, and when she transformed, reverted back to uh, her original self, I thought that was really interesting looking. It's probably going to be making the thumbnail. Uh, so yeah, comment down below and give me your thoughts. Uh, as always, thank you very much for uh, watching this video. If you got all the way to the end, I very much appreciate it. It means a lot. And um, as always, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.